Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Major Nick Tankersley, and I am your narrator for today's ceremony as a big tribute to Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Sowers and his wife Molly on the occasion of his retirement after 20 years of dedicated service to his country and the United States Air Force. Throughout the ceremony, you will be given cues to stand and be seated at the appropriate times. As a reminder, during the playing of our national anthem, military members in uniform should stand in attention, and military members in civilian clothes and civilians should place their right hand over their hearts. Officiating today's ceremony is Colonel Michael Rigoni, Chief, F-16 Foreign Military Sales, Avionic and Electronic Warfare Branch, and Senior Reservist to the, to the F-16 Program Office. We also have with us today many special guests from family members to community leaders. At this time, please join me in welcoming the official parties, family and friends in attendance with us today. Lieutenant Colonel Sowers' wife, Molly, daughters Tristan and Leah, and son, Cole. Lieutenant Colonel Sowers' mom, Bobby Sowers, and father, retired Master Sergeant of the United States Air Force, uh, Jim Sowers. <laughs> Sister Dr. Chantel Weissenmuller and brother-in-law Rick Weissenmuller. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Sowers' mother-in-law Linda Squire and father-in-law Jack Squire, brother-in-law Jason Squire and significant other Shannon Yates, Brother-in-law, Adam Squire, and wife, Heather Squire. <laughs> Colonel Michael Goni and his wife, Mrs. Carolina Goni, and Colonel Goni's sons, Nacho and Enzo. <laughs> Retired Colonel William Bill Patrick, former senior material leader of the B2 System Program Office. The Deputy Program Executive Offer, Officer for the Rapid Sustainment Office, Mr. James Jimmy Lawrence. <laughs> the Senior Material Leader for ISR Sensors and Foreign Military Sales System Program Manager, Colonel Tyler T. Bone Harris. <laughs> the F-16 Development System Manager, Mr. Jeremy Schock. The deputy for F-16 Foreign Military Sales is Shanika Sims. <laughs> Mr. Joe Munger, the material leader for F-16 Foreign Military Sales Production Branch. <laughs> and a warm welcome to all co-workers, industry partners, family, and members of the Team, team Hill who have joined us today. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the wright Patterson Air Force Base Honor Guard, playing of the National Anthem by Staff Sergeant Joshua Honan and the presentation by Mr. Joe Moker. Present hearts.
post. We now welcome Mr. Joe Munger, the chairman for S16 for military sales production branch to come up front and lead us in a prepared invocation. You'll bow with me. Almighty God, we thank you for the countless blessings you have showered on our nation. Today, we thank you for the life and the service of Matthew Wayne Sowards and recognize his family for their years of sacrifice for our United States Air Force. For over 20 years, this family has supported and defended the United States through the work of our national, our nation's Air Force. But Lord, there comes a time in every life to change direction today, and this is Matt's day. As he turns his cat card over to the retired ID card and takes up a more pleasurable, personal endeavor, today we look to you for your blessing as he transitions from active duty to active retirement from the United States Air Force. As we participate in this ceremony, we again remind that everything we have is a gift from you. The gifts of family, friends, of loyal service, camaraderie, of hopes, joys, and even those difficult lessons we learn from past hardships as gifts of your grace. And so as you guide Matt's family, please bless Matt, his wife Molly, their children, Tristan, Leah, and Cole, and Matt's parents, Mr. R Master Sergeant Retired Jim Sowers and his wife Bobby. Lord, I thank you for the years of dedicated service and sacrifice to our country. Lord, now if you would guide Matt and Molly and their marriage and their friendship and their new calling. Thank you for the family members who have joined us here today. Bind this family together as they transition and may the years of retirement bring the Sowers family a closeness they could only dream of. I pray for your continued blessing over Matt during the next phase of his life. May your presence be with him and he, as he chooses new paths to walk, new horizons to explore. And now we ask for your protection over all of those who have traveled here today. And we ask that you return everyone home safely. Lord, please also continue to bless and protect all those who are in harm's way and in the United States of America. As we ask these things in your holy name, amen. Thank you, Ryan Prattison, Air Force Base Honor Guard, Senior uh, Staff Sergeant Conan, and Mr. Munger. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Today's ceremony will encompass Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Sowers, 20 years of service to the United States Air Force, who's owned by Colonel Michael Gunn. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Colonel Gunn. Very nice. <laughs> like a kid over here. <laughs> hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Lieutenant Colonel Retirement Ceremony. Uh, Matt, thank you for giving me the pleasure of doing this uh, on your behalf and being your presiding official. I'd like to say, uh, distinguished guest simulators, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, members of the Air Force and our broader DoD family, from the past, present, and future, I'm privileged to be here today as we honor and pay tribute to the decorated officer, father, husband, friend, mentor, diehard Bengals and Reds fan, and his entire family have helped him 
been by his side along the way during the fantastic Air Force career over the last 20 years. Well, Lieutenant Colonel Matt Sowards, his family's provided him with a critical foundation, starting of course with his wife Molly and his three wonderful children. His father, Master Sergeant, retired Jim Sowards and each individual for being here today, and for each of you who joined us online or there on the TV. Each of you provided Matt with support and flexibility he's needed to answer his country's call and to lead programs and missions of incredible difficulty in some of the world's most austere locations. And according to Matt, that included Oklahoma City and Montgomery, Alabama. As I begin my, as I begin my remarks today, I want to indulge a little bit with you and tell you a story where I think um, the bigger narrative picks up. And so, right about 10 miles west of here in the Air Force Museum, there's an airplane called the Memphis Bell. I think most of you have probably seen the movie. For those of you that haven't, there's a key part of that movie um, as they're flying into Germany. And, and the objective of the mission for the Memphis Bell is to bomb what? The ball bearing plant. And so you'd stack an airplane with huge wings. That's why you see all the, uh, the World War II era uh, airplanes, propeller driven, with huge wings to carry fuel because there was no refueling tankers um, over into Germany. And then as they would get into Germany, they would come up against flak. So you'd have propellants of steel and um, shrapnel that would be launched up. And at that point in time, there was no such thing as a countermeasure or a tactic or a way to overcome that flak that the airplanes were encountering. The best you could do, as you saw in that movie, was tell the crew to put on their flak jackets, flight tight formation, and, and do your best to try to get through it and to over to the target. So I think that was one critical piece of the movie in that, that era uh, to, to show you the advent of surface to air missiles and, and how important it is for not only us to have the capability to get airplanes over target, but to protect the airplanes as they move in that direction. The second, an even bigger part of this, and I think it relates tight to Matt's career, was the fact that the bomb, the bomb run came over the target and they were using a Nordum bomb site. And initially when they came over the target, it was foggy. And so they called the, the bombardier called the captain of the ship and he said, the, the target's foggy, we're not in a good spot. And there was about two planes that had been shot down, there was another nine or, nine or 10 in formation. And he said, what do you want to do? And the co-pilot's looking at him and he said, go around. She. So they go around for the first time. And, uh, you'll have to forgive me if you saw the movie uh, recently or it's something you know by heart. But they go around the second time, the bombardier looks over the target, same thing, still cloudy, I can't see anything. And you're talking about tons of bombs and innocent civilians that could die, right? And so uh, he calls up to the, the captain and he says, are we ready to launch the bombs? He says, no, take the plane around again. Takes the formation again around the third time, which is not easy to do because the crew's endangering their lives. Um, you get a very difficult position for that person to be in. And, and the key thing of that is on the third time around, the bombardier, the, the target cleared, the clouds cleared, everything came clear, and he said, release the bombs and go. And so at that point in time, the entire formation released their bombs over the target to the ball bearing factory. And they came back uh, as safe as they could, uh, losing fuel uh, with a lot of hardship to get back. As we move into the Korean era, or, or the Cold War actually, about 1948, those things that started out as flak developed into more complex things like surface air missiles, and that's a lot of what Matt worked on in his career. And so we moved through that era and we realized the importance of getting long range bombers to support, excuse me, long range tankers, air refueling tankers, to support the bombers as they went over. And so we established bases along the northern part of the United States, namely Minot Air Force Base, where Master Sergeant Sarge was at be able to strike Russia. So a key part of that um, that operation was not only to launch the bombers up, to launch the air refueling tankers to support those bombers. So they could air refuel them over the North Pole and then come down, drop bombs in return. So it was a very unique capability. And with that, the general at the time that was in charge of Strategic Air Command and Curtis Lemay, he decided what was the best way not only to have this capability of uh, bombers and air refueling and have this try it, but to maintain a very high level of readiness. And so the way he propagated a high level of readiness was operational readiness and inspection. No notice. So you can't really imagine that today, but to do a no notice readiness inspection. So an entire team from headquarters would fly down and inspect the unit on the spot. And if they weren't airtight, uh, there'd be a lot of problems to fight. Um, we move on from that. I'm not going to touch every single war and every single thing all the way through the day because we could be here for like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I find it fascinating. But we move on over to Vietnam. And and with these surface air missile threats got even more complex, right? And so you, you have the B-52 uh, and you have a host of new jet propelled airplanes trying to go up against the North Vietnamese. And so what made that particular scenario unique was the fact that 
you were really in a pinch in terms of delivering the, those bottles. It left, very few were precision guided, so the, the B-52 would have to fly at very high altitude, and then the fighter jets would have to fly. Their, their optimum, optimum altitude, unfortunately, was in the range of those surface-to-air surface missiles. So at the first four or five years of the war, a huge percentage of our pilots got shot down, and that's where you hear the Hanoi Hilton, or you heard uh, the prisoner of war camp, they would take the pilots to in North Vietnam. Vietnam. And so it was at that point in time, I think the realization came to how important electronic warfare, as we call it, radar, all these complex things that you hear about today, precision navigation, um, combat refueling, all these things that, that was really the advent of that. So we move 20, 25 years later in Desert Storm, and we went even a step further now. We said, well, if we move all the weaponry, internal carry to the airplane, and we change the configuration of the wing to a triangle, the probability of the surface to air missile intercepting that plane goes way, way down. And so when we kicked off Desert Storm, if, if, I don't know about most of you, I was a kid, I was about my freshman year in high school, I'll never forget it. And, uh, and we were, they were trying to debate how things were gonna unravel, how the war was gonna go down and everything else. So we went downtown Baghdad night one, went right after the communication note and, and some of their things. And we did that with the B-2 bomber, uh, it's another footstep, B-2 bomber uh, that we had Flying internal carry with precision guided munitions, uh, with roughly a, it was over a 95% hit rate on that opening night. And so that pushes us um, into the 2000s, uh, into the Joint Strike Fighter, and, and what you're hearing about today, the debate between fourth generation and fifth generation um, uh, fighter fighters and, and equipment, right? So stealth, not stealth, be able to go high, uh, supersonic, not go supersonic, uh, internal carry, external carry. And for those programs that were on, Matt and I, and, and I think most of the people in this room, that F-16 FMS team, it's that fourth generation, it's, it's refurbishing and reinvigorating a fourth generation platform. And the key to the success of that program right now, it, there's multiple things there. They're absolutely important to making that program a success to deliver it to the current five customers. But one of the biggest and most important key part of the pieces of the equation is the electronic warfare system that's going to be going on the F-16 Block 70, 72. So you can see by some of the things done, uh, a uh, table there that's the Viper Shield program that we're on, as you hear. It uh, sounds a little bit counterintuitive, a snake has a shield on it, but uh, that's the name of the program, needless to say. So I hope I weaved a good base for you to establish um, some ties, I, I think, to Matt's career. And so when I first talked with Matt about his retirement, what would you say, about eight or nine months ago? February. So in February, we first, <laughs> we first talked about his retirement. I sent him a list of 20 questions to try to establish. Um, what we wanted to talk about today, and I said, give me your two favorite quotes, um, you know, that, you, that kind of guide your life. And he said, the first one is from Yoda, <laughs> do or do not, there is no try. And the second one is from the Bible, verse 2, Timothy 2-5. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. And then, Matt, I think your entire career, I, I think, Pretty tight to those those two things: integrity first, and playing by the rules. Um, you can think outside the box. <laughs> I believe each of these quotes truly captures and characterizes Matt's life and career, having never attempted any assignment, family matter, job, or task with a half-hearted effort, and by always playing by the rules and having integrity. And let, with that, let's talk about where it all began. I'm not sure if all of you know it, but Matt grew up as a military brat. He was born at Minot Air Force Base, home of Strategic Air Command bombers, and then moved to Myrtle Beach Air Force Base. I had a tour at Langley Air Force Base, and then finally relocated with his family when his dad retired to Belpre, Ohio, which is a few hours east of Cincinnati. Uh, Matt often talks about his dad, who's a retired Air Force Master Sergeant, he's here right here at the front table, and his close mentor, and all the fun memories he has growing up in the Air Force communities across the country, especially in Myrtle Beach. It obviously left a giant positive and lasting impact on him and propelled him to eventually raise his right hand and join the Air Force. In 1993, Matt enrolled in Belpre High School, Playing sports and becoming a four-year letterman, captain of the football, wrestling, and track teams. He graduated, and we confirmed this last week, ninth of 103 kids in his 1997 class, and then went on to attend Wilmington College here in Ohio, near Xenia, right down the road. After graduating in 2001 with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemistry and a minor in Math and Biology, which are not simple subjects, not simple subjects, he also became a letterman in football and track and devoted lover of bodybuilding. I think it was powerlifting, actually, powerlifting. Uh, and so physical like fitness. <laughs> so it's not an easy major. Uh, got out the gate strong with, with an absolutely great degree. 
After I graduated, hired on, became a quality assurance, quality check vent chemist at Shepherd Color Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. That was from 2001 to 2004. By all accounts, Mattis told me it was a great job with pay and benefits, durable co-workers, and great proximity to the Bengals and Red Stadium, which him and his family enjoy going to today. Without much notice, though, Matt felt a calling to serve, see the world, meet new and exotic and exciting people. So he decided to join the Air Force, picking up where his father left off several years earlier. So in 2003, Matt joined the U.S. Air Force through officer training school. He flew to Montgomery, Alabama in January 2004 and in commission in, two, in excuse me, to April 2004. Matt had hoped, like many of us, to become a pilot, flying heavy C-130s or C-17, but instead he was selected to become an acquisition program manager, leading teams of people who buy all the planes and equipment and avionics that the air crew depend on uh, for their daily sortie. Roughly four weeks before graduation, he received word that he, would become, that he would be headed back to Ohio and assigned as an acquisition program manager, seeing the world, exotic world of acquisitions and all the exotic and exciting people who work at right at Patterson Air Force Base. Came home. Not quite maybe what you were expecting when you signed up. Uh, that was a sign when he came back to Wright Patterson Air Force Base from 2004 to 2008, working as a rapid acquisition response officer conducting a major ORI, Operational Readiness Inspection, in the AE Directorate, and then as a project manager as an AC-130U, Avionics Sensors Flight Chief. And that set the stage, I believe, for most of the rest of your career in avionics, electronic warfare, uh, things of that nature. It was during this time that he met his wife, Molly, sitting up front here, married her in 2006, and had his first daughter, Leah. For those of you who don't know Molly, she is a native of Ohio, went to Wright State University, and graduated from Cosmopolitan School in 2007. Today, she's the owner of Hawthorne and Willow Handmade LLC, who makes handbags, handmade handbags, excuse me, in a pair with her mom. She's the love and centerpiece of Matt's entire life. And this, uh, earlier this week when we had lunch, I got to see some of your uh, stuff. It's very, very nice. So anyone that has the opportunity to see that, I highly encourage you to. In 2008, it became time for the Sowards family to PCS, as is common in most military careers. After a few years, he called up for a move. And he got actually number four or five choices on his dream sheet. I think it was the last one. Five or five? So he moved to Hanscom Air Force Base in Massachusetts near Boston. And once there, he took up several program management positions, spanning a wide range of systems, from the Directorate Executive Officer for the Cyber and Etc. Directorate, the Global Air Traffic Management Branch Chief, the acquisition branch, the mobility branch, and AFSOC fix and rudder routing branch, uh, 853rd electronic system crew. For anyone in the acquisitions business, it's common knowledge that the top 10% of officers are often assigned to a base that's co-loaded with MIT Lincoln Labs, MIT Research Engineering, Harvard, and a host of other world-renowned institutions. During this tour, Manor took his first deployment and deployed for six months as an executive officer through the 388th Operations Group 380th Air Expedition in the United States Central Command, Aldafer Air Force Base, United Arab Emirates. In 2011, it became time to leave Massachusetts, and Matt and his family moved to Maryland, where he began work at NAVAIR in the B-22 Joint Program Office. He was the lead of the Countermeasures Program, Training Branches, and the Deputy Director Program for Integration responsible for cost schedule performance of $900 million in training system support for the Marine Corps, the Air Force B-22 operations. Uh, one of US, U.S. SOCOM's top acquisition priorities. So, for those of you who don't know, the, the C, excuse me, the uh, Osprey, the B-22, is, is made to transport troops and equipment quickly from uh, the base of operations into the front lines. And at that point in time, it was really unique to, to have an airplane that could uh, take off, uh, turn the rotors forward, and then go fast. So, absolutely cutting-edge program. Uh, during this assignment, Matt volunteered and deployed again, going forward into the Middle East. This time for eight months to work as the lead quality assurance specialist. Kuwait North Defense Contract Management Agency, Middle East, Kuwait. During this deployment, he led 107 Army Contracting Officers Representative, conducted more than 600 audits, and managed quality assurance operations in Kuwait, Bahrain, Kyrgyzstan, Oman, Qatar, Afghanistan, and the United Arab Emirates, overseeing airfield fuels, fires, contractor reports, logistics, and flight line operations. This was by far one of Matt's biggest and top jobs, one that he'd soon be rewarded for. And for those of you who don't know, when, when we contract for a lot of this logistics support you know, all over the world, it's, similar. it's a percentage that we provide organically as we, as we get going to get down range, but there's an even bigger part of it that we require from 
uh, contractors and contract support. And a big part of that is making sure that if we order uh, 100,000 pounds of fuel, that's what's delivered. And so it's, it's an oversight arm. So Matt really had a fundamental role in making sure there was oversight uh, and integrity and honesty with the contractors who supported the war effort in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, after Matt returned from the deployment, he received, the Sowers family received orders again this time in 2014. Uh, he got his number, I think it was eight of eight assignments. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I got a call from Colonel Quick saying, hey, this one wants you to go to Tinker, see it. <laughs> <laughs> so he moved to Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma, working in special duty as the Acquisition Sustainment Unit Program Manager, 5th Manpower Requirement Squadron, and then as a Program Manager in the Acquisition B-2 Sustainment Branch. Managing 44,000 acquisition bills worth $2.4 billion in budget. And his OPR, his Officer Performance Report, the annual evaluation, Matt Senior Rader said he was the number one change agent. He awarded $230 million, uh, a $230 million multi role repair and parts procurement contract, 10% cost, or, or created 10% cost, improved the supply chain, and moreover, he was the number one of three majors number five of 43 majors by his program executive officer. Um, they have him picked out to be a program element monitor, which is a very senior important position in the acquisition world. And he's ready for this high energy office, or excuse me, this, off, this high energy officer is ready for a material leader followed on by in-residence senior development education. So those are all really big uh, things to have put in your OPR. In 2019, as you, pro as you progress through an assignment, um, the Sowers family again received word it was time to move. Uh, I don't know where Fort Belvoir stacked on your list this time. Yeah, PVD. It never happened though. It never <laughs> happened. So he was slated to become a PEM out of Fort Belvoir uh, for working on Army programs. I guess it was Army and Joint programs, right? Battle management. Battle management. And the CV was strong enough, record was strong enough. Uh, several important people here in Ohio, Wright Pat, knew his background and they gave him what would, what eventually would become his final tour returning him home to Ohio and reuniting with his entire family. Uh, once he got back here at Wright Patterson Air Force Base, he undertook a series of incredible assignments working as a binding request as the Director of Operations for the Combat Tanker, it's the KC-46, and the Tanker Directorate, the KC-46 Flight Systems Branch, Mobility Directorate, the Chief F-16 Operations Flight Branch, the Chief F-16 Foreign Military Sales Electronic Warfare Branch uh, for the Fighter and Advanced Aircraft. Since 1776, new generation of Americans has been spared the responsibility of defending freedom. Today's airmen remain committed to persevering the freedom that others won for us for generations to come. By displaying the flag and giving it a distinctive fold, we show respect to the flag and express our gratitude to those individuals who fought and continue to fight for freedom at home and abroad. Since the dawn of the 20th century, airmen have proudly flown the flag in every major conflict on land, lands, and skies around the world. It is their responsibility and our responsibility to continue to protect and preserve the rights, privileges, and freedoms that we as Americans enjoy today. The United States flag represents who we are. It stands for the freedom we all share and the pride and patriotism we feel for our country. We cherish such legacy as a beacon of hope to one and all who all may it wave. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Honor Guard now perform the 13-fold 13 13 flag ceremony in honor of Lieutenant Colonel Sowers. This American flag was proudly flown by the request of Ohio Congressman, the Honorable Jim Jordan, over our nation's capital. The certificate reads, this flag was flown to Lieutenant Colonel Matthew W. Sowers, serving 20 years in the United States Air Force, 9 Jan 2004, through 1 February 2024. Ohio thanks you for your service.
first fold of our flag, which is simple as life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who give, gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in times of war for divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute for our country, for in the words of Stephen Decatur, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of, of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all our enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith, their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to the father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrews' eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in the Christian's eyes God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold and last fold flag is completely folded, the stars are utmost reminding us of our nation's motto, motto, in God request. On behalf of the President of the United States, the United States, State, Air, States Air Force, and a grateful nation, please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your honorable and faithful service. Thank you, Rag Passion, Honor Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my honor to present 10th Colonel Retired Matthew Salas. Staff Sergeant Honing for coming out and uh, presenting the collar, retiring the collar, the flag folding, uh, playing the violin. That was awesome. I mean, come on, one more round of applause. So, Colonel Regoni told me, he's like, make sure you write everything down. Talk to Joe and the team, because standing up here, you're going to forget stuff, right? <laughs> so last night, I was going through and I was writing it down, and Molly, we were sitting in bed, and I'm sitting there going through it. I just started crying. I'm like, wow. I don't cry, and here we go. So if I start crying while I'm up here, please, you can make fun of me at the end. It'll be all right. So first off, Colonel Ragoni, um, thank you for taking the time to officiate today. Um, an amazing job summing up 20 years. Loved how you tied it back to the, to the movie. 
touch on everything that I've worked on and how it's progressed from then and from now and the impact that it makes on our nation. Um, with for that, I'd like to give you a little token uh, for coming out here. It is ten year old single malt scotch. Thank you, right? Thank you. So you can open it up here in about twenty minutes. Tank. <laughs> Um, he's a PIM at the Pentagon, and Colonel Gunny talked about being a program down monitor and um, how trying and hard that is. So thank you for taking the time out, driving eight hours, getting here last night, and calling me right away. Because for you guys who don't know, I actually coach and train in a powerlifting. Went and hit the gym, and then got up and came over here this morning uh, to stand up and read a 28-page script. So thank you for driving in. Um, I have something for you as well. It's a 12-year-old Saj. <laughs> Um, Captain Harris, Basha, please come up here because I got something for you guys as well. For anybody that knows, these things are not easy. These things are not easy to put together. And um, it takes a team, many dry runs, going through everything, making sure everybody's where it's supposed to be. And I really appreciate you. Um, so I do have some more scotch for you as well. There you go. I know you said you like single malt. I'm sorry, they only had one box left, so here. <laughs> you get a point. Thank you, guys. Last but not least, Mr. Joe Monger. These last two years, man. Viper Shield. Viper Shield. Viper Shield. For all you guys don't know, Viper Shield will eventually one day maybe be on an aircraft. <laughs> um, so, Joe's a good Southern Texas guy, Dallas Cowboy friend. Of Dallas Cowboy fan, but I'm also a Bengals and a Reds fan. Um, so it was, it was good to have someone else in the office to understand how bad we were and uh, every loss and all the good conversation that we have. And I really appreciate you coming out here today. I know the last couple months um, with your family and your parents getting on, moved up here and taking care of them, taking time out this week to come over here, it really means a lot. Um, so with that, I know you're a whiskey guy. <laughs> so I got you a top shelf. Uh -oh. By top shelf, I mean middle because I can't reach that high. <laughs> um, it is wood for reserve. I think I got this for you earlier. Oh, yeah. right? yeah. yeah. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> All right. I promise I'll be quick because we have an open bar, beer, t bone sir, soda for you. Um, and we got some food coming out. I'm starving. I don't know about you guys, but I'm always hungry. So first off, Molly. I want to get a tissue out time I start crying here. So, um, <laughs> 20 years. 17 for us, 20 years. You're my rock, right? Love you. Um, I don't really need to say anything else right now. But you keep this family together, you keep us moving forward, you make sure the kids are where they need to go, where they need to be, whether it's school, doctor's appointments, um, anything make sure that we are taken care of. For all of you guys know this is hard, but most importantly, you keep my ass in line every day. They've tried, but you're the one that does it every day. Um, and everyone knows that's a full-time job. Um, you make it look easy for everyone, but it's not. I know how hard it is. You know, I'm always 100% go all the time. Can't sit still. Always have to have something to do. But you've been there every step of the way, and I appreciate it. I promised you years ago that I'd give you the world. I have not fulfilled that promise yet, but every day I'm trying as hard as I can to, to be there and give you everything that you need. So for your for you, just a small appreciation. Um, I have some flowers for you. So come up here and get a picture. embarrass my kids because they don't want to get in front of people today. You know, so I'm going to talk about all three of you at one time. Uh, I know it hasn't been easy, Tristan, moving from base to base, job, you know, place to place across the country. You like to have structure. You like to have everything a certain way and be the same all the time. I know that my military service has been the hardest on you. Um, so as my firstborn, thank you. <laughs> um, it's never a dull moment with you. You are very strong and determined. 
and when you set your mind to something, nobody can stop it, ever. Uh, I'm so proud of the woman that you're becoming, and I can't wait to see where you go now. Leia, just like me, 100% no quit every day. You're strong, smart, determined. You're becoming everything that your mother and I could ever hope for and expect in a young lady. I can't wait to see where you go as you finish high school in the next two years, and when you go after that. And for my little man, Cole, <laughs> who is going to come up here, apparently, because <laughs> uh, he knows he's got a gift. He's more worried about what I want to give him right now than um, being here and understanding what's going on. But uh, life has given him many challenges, which he faces head on. I mean, he is the strongest little guy I've ever met in my life. He runs head first into everything. He's over overcome so much. Um, he's an independent, 100% ball of energy. It's from his mom, not me, because, you know, I'm always laid back. <laughs> you want to get your present now? Yeah. Okay. Come over here and grab it. Girls, please come up here. It's right here. Here you go. <laughs> and for you two, I know these are just flowers, but you did get a car for Christmas and your birthday, and you've gotten two, so you're good. <laughs> turn around. Look, turn around. Call, turn around. Here, buddy. Look, I can't even straight. Put the box on the back. Put the box on the back. There you go. Come here. Go open your leg, I'll make a big one. All right. Um, so I do have some flowers and some gifts to give some family. And I'm going to make this quick because I know we uh, want to sit here and have a good time and listen to some, some music and get out of work. So, uh, for my mom and dad, please come up here. Yeah. So, I've had the opportunity in my positions to be able to take flags and have them flying on aircraft. Um, not everybody in the military gets to do that. Um, like they were talking about my shadow box, I've had that flag for 20 years. And the guy that made the, the shadow box, I actually had to ship that flag to Michigan. So, I was a little worried about it getting it back to make sure it was the one I got back. But throughout my career, um, I had this flight, I wasn't in the program office at the time, but as Chris knows, as being the previous DO, on our KC-46 first flight in January 19, January 21st, uh, 2019, we've had several flags flown on that aircraft. And as it, I replaced him as the DO, we had some left over, so I bought him. So for this, this, this US flag was flown on the KC-46 first flight delivery to United States Air Force on 25 January 2019 for Jim and Bobby Sowards from Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Sowards presented for August 2023. I can't let you go without having some flowers as well. Thank you. All right. So, so this old man right here, I look nothing like him. I think I was adopted. And, uh, so, <laughs> he has more hair than I do. I get to do this one day, though, hopefully in the next couple weeks. So, my father and my mother have, God, they've been to everything. All sports in high school, home and away, college sports, they went everywhere. And when I went to officer's training school, my mom and dad came down for the parade ceremony. And in the at the end of the ceremony, my father was my first salute. So it's only fitting that I'm going to coin him and he's going to be my last salute. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll try and, uh, um, so when I met Molly, it was just me and Tristan. All right. She was my first actually. It was just me and Tristan. Um, I was previously married. I got full custody. And, and uh, I think Molly fell in love with Tristan before she fell in love with me. So that, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do when you have to face this ugly, right? Um, I remember, Linda, when we Hi, first Lynn. got married, you looked at me and you said, please don't take my daughter away and move away. And then three, what, three, three months later, I got orders to move. Um, I know it hasn't been easy on you and Jack, um, but you've got, you guys have been driving all over the country, all the times we spent at Cape Cod. Um, Oklahoma, I know that was a hard one. But I'd like for you guys to come up here because I have something for you guys as well. This flag also was, um, this U.S. flag was flown on the KC-46 first delivery to the United States Air Force on 25 January 2019 
for Jacqueline Esquire presented for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So this me, I can quit referring to you. Sir, no, sir Colonel, <laughs> sir. You can promote me, me if you want. Made me calling that for all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, where's my sister? For all you know, this is my sister, Dr. Chantel Weisenmaler. If she stands up, she stands about three foot taller than me because she's six foot tall and I'm not. And that's not fair. But for you and Rick, I have something for you as well, so please come up here. So Tate and I were stationed together at the B2. Um, uh, retired Colonel Bill Patrick was supposed to come today, but he had a last minute engagement. He was our he was our boss there, and uh, we had some air we had some flags flown on the aircrafts there as well. So this U.S. flag was flown on the B2 Spirit of Louisiana aircraft 88-1088 on 2 June 2018 for Rick and Chantel Weisenmaier presented for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay and Shanna. So Molly's oldest brother was actually a tank driver for four years in the Army, and he said, oh, that ain't for me no more. <laughs> um, so he, thank you for your service, Jay, and thank you for being here. Um, you. I want to present you and Shanna. This U.S. flag was flown on the V2 Spirit uh, of Louisiana as well, 88-1088 on 2 June 2018, for Jay, Squire, and Shanna Gates. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's your twin. Chantel, it's your twin. All right, last but not least, um, Molly's second older brother, who's our age, my age, uh, and Adam and Heather, please come up here because I got a token for you as well. Um, so this U.S. flag was flown on the B-2 Spirit of Louisiana, Aircraft 88, 1088, get a theme here, they were all following the same aircraft. Um, 2 June 2018 for Adam and Heather Squires. All right. So last, over the last week, I've been going through and trying to figure out how to sum up 20 years of military service. And I can't. It's hard. I tried doing a five minute speech. Um, I was I was hitting roadblocks. I thought I was at a loss for words, which you know that's hard, right? That's hard. That's hard. Um, honestly, though, how can you speak in twenty years in five minutes or less? Colonel Gunny, you did an amazing job talking about my whole career, talking about the story, bringing it all back together. Um, that good. So I'm over through all I can. Instead, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out today. I want to thank all of you, and for those on the virtual link as well, for teaching me, for mentoring me, listening, something I need to work on all the time, learning and working with me through all the ups and downs that we have had and that we have faced in acquisitions. Because acquisitions are easy. You know, they don't give us wide right and say point down range, pull the trigger. I mean, we have to come up with some unique solutions to find a problem for our warfighters to be able to come home and see that. Um, and this includes our industry partners. I love Lockheed Martin. Get that on video. <laughs> um, Lockheed Martin and I have butted heads a few times, but at the end of the day, they want what's best for the warfighter as well. They just want a lot of money. Um, I am humbled and honored to have had the opportunity and to be able to work with each and every one of you. Colonel Patrick's not here, but T Bone, Jimmy Lawrence is showing up late. Obviously, Colonel Wagner is out. Colonel Rogoni, uh, Colonel Bailey, and Colonel Reagan, who can't be here as well. Thank you for showing me how to be a leader. Um, there, there's Being a servant leader is not easy. Um, for all of you who don't know what that is, you can Google it later, so I'm not going to go into it. But being a servant leader is hard, but that is what is needed in that position. You showed me how the leadership was supposed to work. Joe, T-Bone, everyone. Lieutenant Colonel retired. Tony Giovanni, my first flight commander at the, at the gun shows. Um, thank you.
Thank you, guys. And Bob, where's Bob? Bob, thank you for showing up, because I had a whole thing in it for you. If you weren't here, I was going to read it anyway. For you guys who know, Bob was my deputy before Connor got in. Got in. Bob is my work dad. He's the same age as my father-in-law and my dad. Um, thank you. Most importantly, though, thank you for being the Air Force's first guide on bear back in 1947. Because you're old. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, me and Bob went back and forth every day. All the time. We always crack jokes with you there. But just want to make sure everybody knows. He's old. He retired and then went and got another job at KPR. So I'll see you on Monday when I go do my internship in Skillbridge with you and Chris Hansen. Uh, but seriously, though, words can't express, express how Molly, how grateful Molly and I are uh, for all the friendships and the moments that we've made throughout the years. And all of you that have embarked on this journey with us deserve more than just a simple thank you. We are lucky that you are part of our story. With the utmost respect and gratitude, thank you all. Each of you will always hold a special place in our hearts. I am truly grateful to have learned from each and every one of you helping to shape the leader that I have become. Even though today is my last day wearing this uniform, I will continue to help and serve my brothers and sisters in service now, for those that are in now, and for those that will come after us. As I, trans as I transition into the civilian work. As Molly and I move to the next chapter of life, I leave you with two things. One, always do what is right for the warfighter. Colonel, we're going to integrity first. Do what is right, find a solution, but always stay within the parameters of the law. Think outside the box, but don't break the law. And why? One of my favorite sayings, and you guys are going to laugh when I say that. Because I am too pretty to go to jail. <laughs> all right, if we had bingo cards, put it down. Somebody owe bingo, right? And uh, to all my friends, family, and co-workers, and military civilian contract, and family that came out today. Always remember, aim high, fly fight. Thank you. I'm not trying, you are. Ladies and gentlemen, in appreciation for his contribution to the Air Force's mission, the men and women of the United States Air Force are proud to have served with Lieutenant Colonel Sowers and assure him he will always be a valuable member of the Air Force family, even in retirement. We wish him and Molly every success in their future endeavors. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Air Force song. The lyrics can be found on the second <coughs> page, second to last page in the program. And you're really standing for the departure of the official party and retirement of the college. Wait till you do something. He's a certain. When you're ready, Jesse. <laughs> Off we go to the lobby yonder, climbing high in the sound. We're off. We're going to be singing the song. Start it over. <laughs> All right, start it over. So at every event, we always sing the song. And when the music starts, start singing. OK, guys? Come on, sir. you got to lead us here. It wouldn't be my retirement if it wasn't. this wouldn't happen. All right, ready? Yep. Go. We go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. First, and then it goes into it. So we started a little tour. All right. This concludes today's ceremony. We welcome everyone to congratulate the tenth departure of the official party and retirement. Okay. Okay.
Racist. 